Riding the yield curve is a fixed income trading strategy that requires a few conditions for it to actually work. So on this graph, I've mapped out the actual spot curve in the blue line, right? So just for uh, one year, zero coupon bond, if we wanted to buy that, we could discount it at a rate of 2%. For two years, zero coupon, uh, we could buy that at a rate of 3.25% and so on. So we can see that the spot rate curve that I've drawn out here is actually upward sloping. And in order to ride the yield curve, you do need an upward sloping spot rate curve. Because in order to ride the yield curve, you need the forward curve to be above the spot rate curve. So we need this blue, this orange line to be above the blue line. And so what this riding the yield curve strategy really is, and I'll just explain it conceptually before we get into a few examples up here, but what this strategy really is, is that let's say if we had a two-year investment time horizon, well, one thing we could do is we could buy a two-year bond at a rate of 3.25% and just hold it until it matures and get this much interest. But what if we wanted to get a higher yield? Well, we could go out and buy, let's say, a six-year bond, and that bond would earn us 7% interest, and then we could just hold it for two years ride the yield curve down like this, and then sell it when it only has four years to maturity. But in order for this strategy really to work, we would actually need for the spot rate curve to stay the same size under the same slope with the same rates over time. Now let's go up above and look at an example of how the numbers actually break out. So, we have this one year, we have bond one right here. So this first box is bond one, and this second box is bond two. I'm gonna hide this box right now just to make it a little easier for us to uh, just to look at. So what we're doing right here is we're just saying at right now, at time, the year one, um, what is the price of this bond? So we have a bond with a notional value of $100 and we, it pays a coupon rate of 6%. And because it's a five-year bond, we just went to go to the spot rates. Whatever was a spot rate at five years, we said that's the coupon payment, 6%. And then we took all those cash flows over here. So we said in year one, we're going to get a $6 cash flow. In year two, we're going to get $6. In year three, same with year four. But then at the end of year five, we're going to get the $100 notional plus the $6 coupon. Then what we did is we took the present value of each of these cash flows. So we took the $6 divided by 1.02 to the power of one. And then for year two, we took the, we took the $6 and divided it by this two year spot rate to the power of two, because as we get further out in the future, we're gonna have to um, discount it back by more years. And then all, of a, all the way out to the fifth year and we're discounting back by the five year spot rate. So we found that right now, today, before year one, it would cost us $199 to buy this bond. And we know it trades at a premium because the yield to maturity of 5.82% is actually um, lower than the, the spot rate at that time of 6%. So we know it's gonna trade for a premium over 100. But what happens two years later? So like I said, we had this strategy where we wanted to buy a longer maturity bond and then we wanted to sell it um, a few years, two years into the future to get extra yield. So that's what we're looking at down here. So right here is the, uh, the, the uh, coupon payment we would have gotten at year one, but then we could have reinvested that, right? So we took that $6 and we um, multiplied it by one plus that one year spot rate that we can reinvest that. And then the two year, uh, coupon payment we basically got that today in our timeline we just got our two-year payment uh, coupon payment and then now we're gonna sell the bond basically on the same day but what is the price of this bond at this point in time right two years in the future well we have three cash flows left to receive so each cash flow in the first two years is six dollars but we're assuming that the spot rate curve did not move, right? So we can discount it by that 2% because we're gonna say two years in the future, the spot rate curve will be the exact same shape. So the coupon that we're getting next year 
will just be discounted by this one year spot rate of 2%. And then the same thing for this one, which is discounted by that 3.25%. And then finally, we're gonna get a one, our $106. And then we're gonna discount it by that three year spot rate uh, compounding three times. And then the bond price is just the sum of those three future cash flows, okay? So that's how much someone would have to pay us right now to buy this bond from us. So our total return on this bond involves the initial coupon that we received plus the reinvestment that we received on that coupon. The coupon we received today, which is actually two years later than the initial start of this investment, and then the three years discounted back to today, the three payments discounted back to today that we will receive in the future. So that is the numerator here. And then we divide by uh, C cell C5, which was just the in initial price we had to pay by the bond. And then we discount it, uh, or we take it to the exponent of 0.5, which is basically the square root, because this is two years of interest that we had earned. And then we find that this whole investment earned us a total return of 8.03%. But then let's take a look at this other bond. So this bond here, this is actually a six-year bond. So this whole this whole block is just bond number two. And instead of using five years, we're using six years. And we do the same thing, but this time it's a 7% uh, coupon payment rate, right, for the six-year bond. So the coupon payment's actually $7. And so we do this whole thing where we map out all these cash flows, we discount them all back, and we find that, you know, Right all the way at the beginning of the investment today, we would have to pay $101.94 to buy this bond. But then two years later, what's the situation? Well, we got that $7. We can reinvest it at 2%. Then today, which is exactly two years later, we got $7. And then we have uh, four more cash flows we're going to receive in the future that we can discount backwards. And then we take the present value of each of those. And we sum it up and we realize that, you know, today, which is two years after our initial investment, we could sell this bond for $170.68, or no, $107.68 if the yield curve does not move at all over that two years. So then we can basically take all three of these values, add them up, divide by the initial price we paid, and then take the square root like we did with the last one and find that this would give us a total return of 9.32%. And we see that this is a better return than the 8.01 or 8.03% with the five year bond because we wrote out farther on the yield curve. But remember what I said at the beginning of the video that if this is not an upward sloping spot curve, then the writing the yield curve strategy doesn't actually work. So let's say if instead of this spot curve being upward sloping, this, you know, it goes two, three, four, five, and then it goes back to four, then to three, then to two. Okay, now we see that we actually get a higher return by buying the um, bond that has a, a shorter term than the one with the longer term, right? So this, this whole riding the yield curve strategy will only work if the spot curve is actually upward sloping. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to uh, play around with this file that I created, check the link in the description for the download link. It will download automatically and you can play around with the numbers and see how it works yourself. And uh, thank you for watching.